We're here in Orlando at Jones High School to speak with James Chief Wilson. Chief, I know that you're a product of Florida. You grew up in Sanford. I went to Crooms Academy and started your band career in the sixth grade with a $5 baritone horn. How did that start come around to going to Florida A&M? That was my beginning and very humbly and uh, when Mr. George Hill, who also one of the outstanding band directors, uh, taught us how to play instruments and so forth. It led up all the way through high school until the time he had to go to the service during the war in the arts. And as a result of that training, uh, the colleges and universities, all the male school uh, was stripped for service. And in 1946, when I was a senior and graduating, that was the end of the war in Japan, so to speak. And uh, all of the former college students, especially the band members, were coming, returning on GI Bill. And so this gave uh, also uh, Mr. Kirksey had gone, who was the originator of the bands at Florida. You know, this was when Dr. Foster came upon the scene and it was his first year. My then principal, uh, J.R. Crumbs, took five of us up to A&M for an audition because uh, during the summer he had understood that they were going to reorganize the band and would be looking for students. And as a result of we went up and took the audition and we were granted scholarships. And this was really uh, the thing that uh, elevated our interest as well as uh, supplemented our financial things to go to college. We could contribute and give them an opportunity to start the band all over again. Mm -hmm. So you were there when, when Mr. Kirksey was there? No, I, he, he, had, he had gone uh, to West Palm Beach at that particular time he retired mm -hmm. to them. But anyway, um, I had visited with the, the Crooms Band to a and a couple of times prior to that in the 40s. And uh, everything was uh, was dismantled at a and And it was almost a girls, all girls school because everybody was in the service. And and we we felt, felt special. Uh, fortunately, I was the only non-veteran that was committed to the school and given a scholarship because of the instrument that I played mm -hmm. and uh, they accepted me. But every other person in the band was a return veteran. So that was fortunate for me. So who was the director there? Dr. William P. Foster at the time. See, that was his first year at A&M and my first year. He was there to begin the band program again. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Two great gentlemen. I understand that you were, you're also interested in carpentry, and how did that play into going to A&M and ending up in the band? Well, that was uh, my passion as a youngster. I took in a lot in high school. I, we didn't have band program and so forth, and I was just interested in that. I learned how to do carpentry, and there was an age uh, father of my brother-in-law who did carpentry work. He was old and I would go and help him just to drive the car, oh. the truck, <laughs> to work. And uh, as a result, I, I developed a lot of skills in building and whatnot, which I uh, not only used in the changing of, of our home from a single store to a double store. When I acquired my home in Orlando, I did 90, almost 80 percent of the refurbishing of that. Wow. I only had the uh, superstructure and the plumbing done, and I did all the trimming work and everything else on my own mm -hmm. when I came home from band practice. So, so not only did you build a band. I, I saved myself mm -hmm. over $60,000 <laughs> doing the work myself. Wow. Well, once you graduated from A&M, 
you began your teaching career here at Jones. Correct. But not as a band director. Right. Uh, at this particular time, uh, the state and I know the county was not hiring black music music teachers. In fact, about it for the music at uh, for commencement at Jones at that particular time, they would use uh, people who played music in the community, like this uh, uh, different uh, music teachers from other schools to come over and prepare the commencement music mm -hmm. for the. And so, uh, so you were teaching civics and history. I, uh, that's the only way I could get the job. I was, mm -hmm. As a, Mr. Banks uh, disguised it, and I was a civic, and he, and he gave me a study period, or a period of time when I could teach kids who, in the school, who had study periods. The teachers would send them to me. And mm -hmm. they sent me some of the most brilliant kids in the school. And... I understand that you started with the younger students rather than starting with the juniors and seniors. You started yeah. the music program with the younger students, and yeah. why was that? Well, I, I knew uh, it would take some time, at least more than a year, to develop a band. So I, I chose to deal with the younger group, train them, and then start our succession. So that even at one time I had students in every grade from fourth grade to seniors because of setting up the rotation and giving them the experience that they need and so forth. Mm -hmm. And at the time, were you able to have <clears throat> band in a nice air-conditioned no, band Lord. room? It was air-conditioned in then, I don't know. <laughs> it was so far from our community that I knew it, hardly knew that it existed. But anyway, uh, we had to... Uh, no facilities, nothing else. We had to have our classes on the stage in the auditorium. And uh, using the, uh, the free time that the kids had for study and so forth. And then I expanded that to after school. And then from after school, I expanded to Saturday morning. I spent all that time with them. And any other holiday that existed, we took advantage of having band rehearsal, band theory and so forth. Mm -hmm. And I chose, uh, I, I knew that if the kids were, had good foundation and uh, I made it my business to be sure that, that I taught fundamentals and the theory and everything that they would need because they were the type of kids with that background, they could go on their own. They, and that really what happened. Mm -hmm. I made sure that they were thoroughly grounded with fundamentals and basic skills. and. Uh, they did most of it on their own when they went home. I had very uh, few requests for reference because they learned well and I taught them as the best as I knew how. Fantastic. So your administration <clears throat> at that time was eager to have a band? Oh yes, the community and everybody else because at that particular time uh, he had uh, a friend of mine uh, who was the band director standing in Jacksonville, they would come down once a year and give a concert. And I guess, I, I'm sure that he was building up the interest. And then bands, there were about eight or nine at the most bands in the whole state of Florida for special occasion, like the Lily White Social Group and Eastern Star and uh, uh, people who, see, I, most of our people who had to work as uh, maids and so forth, they only had one time off because, and that was their, their Easter uh, thing uh, where they would have these parades and so forth, and mm -hmm. we, would, we would play for them also. So you were, from the very beginning, yes. it was about serving the community. Right. And it was about the community supporting the band. Correct. Because you weren't provided with Nothing. a room full of instruments. All we had was our hands, and, and <laughs> believe it or not, the first band was a clapping band. We, and this is where I uh, used that period to develop the fundamental principle of counting and resting, and so. So when we make, had a chance to meet them with the instruments, it was just only the physical adaptation to this, because they could read with, real well, you know, from the, mm -hmm. the basic fundamentals that I had given. Well, and very few of them. Maybe one or two had had any experience in piano, 
a lesson. Most of them uh, could not read it, and so I reserved the credit for teaching them how to read it, mm -hmm. and I made it the fundamental process. If you can't read, you can't make the big band, and they all could. Well, you had, you certainly had challenges <clears throat> oh, yes. as a band director, yeah. and you told me something about making chicken soup. Can you repeat that, please? Okay. Oh, yes. Uh, well, uh, I can attribute my success to some of the facetious things that we shared here was that I could make chicken soup out of chicken feathers. <laughs> In other words, we didn't have it, but we took what we have, our bare hand from our bare hands to all the classical instruments and so forth, and, and above all, appreciation and the changing of uh, the community's appreciation from uh, uh, status quo to uh, uh, classical music in terms mm -hmm. of symphonic and uh, operatic music. So your students, although they were very intelligent and very interested, Super. didn't have a background in classical music. They didn't have the experience of it. And you didn't have YouTube at the time. Definitely. How did you introduce them and instill a love of classical music? Well, I had to be very innovative. I have to admit that. And uh, I used uh, the, this as a, more or less as a crutch for to get, everybody wanted to get in the band because it was a new venture in the community. And I, I insisted that we show some appreciation for all the music because that's what my major intent was to get them all interested. We would go to, to programs in the community. This, at this particular time, we couldn't go to the symphony to uh, hear a symphony band. And I was fortunate enough that they was starting a, a symphony band orchestra here in Orlando. Uh, Eve Sheridan was the conductor. And I talked with him one day, and he would bring a small ensemble out to our schools so our kids would really see what a string instrument was mm -hmm. and, and play some of the ensembles and things that wow, this was part of that growth program. And I had very good cooperation from the symphony orchestra. Uh, when they found out the need, they would send people out to help us on various occasions. So you actually implemented an outreach program. Oh, very definitely, yeah. To come into your school. I had to be innovative about everything because <laughs> there was nothing when I came here. Well, do you feel like when you came to Jones High School, the town was ready for you and a band? Oh, definitely, definitely. Uh, Mr. Jacob Smith and... Uh, several other major contributors in the community, both civic and religious, they had raised well, between five hundred thousand dollars already for a band when it was here, and the money was here. It's reflected in our history there, what they did, and uh, 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 as one of my students say, Chief, all you had to do was say jump, and we'd say hi hi, and. <laughs> The parents and everybody else was that way. They were so eager to have a band program, which is an innovation of uh, uh, an improvement in the culture of the community. Well, they were certainly lucky to find you. I know you feel like you were lucky to find them. Correct. And it was kind of a golden opportunity. Uh, it was God's will. It had to be. <clears throat> what would you like to pass on to future directors or to young directors who are just starting out, what things do they need to be successful? Well, this is a hard one because, first of all, uh, the pressures of society at this particular time now are so different. And unless they have even more the fervor of what is all about giving of themselves or, or getting something, uh, bringing out of these kids what they were. Uh, I often uh, call them borderline geniuses. I call them geniuses because where well, they had the same privileges as everybody else, they would have been a genius. But they could get to the point and um, with, without outside influences and experiences, uh, they did best they could. And, and uh, it was my intention to 
take them beyond that and further develop their skills and potential, and I think I did that. Yes, you definitely <clears throat> did. So, so you feel young directors need to have devotion to their job? Yes. And need society, to have the pride culture, in their job? Yeah. So forth, culture mm -hmm. and, and everything. You have to go beyond selfishness. That's because all of us, when we get out there, we want to be the great I am. We want to be this, that, and that. <laughs> But it's so much work getting that, <laughs> so many sacrifices and so many challenges. It's a new day, and I just hope they have the same forever that we had to make a difference in, in not only our lives but the community and their parents. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, now, I know you to be a highly moral individual and one with a great sense of commitment. How many years did you teach here at Jones? Okay, 40 and one half years uh, I've been here as mm -hmm. a high mm -hmm. person. And uh, of course, as I mentioned earlier, it wasn't all at Jones because I uh, I had no feeder program. In fact, by the, the kids had couldn't come if they wanted to from other schools. So I had to go into the elementary schools in the neighborhood schools and work with them and the principals and so forth until they could come out of elementary school and come to Jones. Mm -hmm. And of course, <clears throat> I, I even worked with the kids when they integrated the school. They came from elementary school, they went into middle school, and then from middle school here. And this was really a, uh, a competition that created uh, another challenge for me. So uh, <clears throat> this is where I had the Saturday programs and uh, I, I had opportunities to go into these elementary schools and expose them so that the kids would want to come to here. And they were very familiar with me because uh, they couldn't go anyplace else and I wanted to be sure that they were prepared and we had a lot of work to do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so the steadfastness, the commitment that you stayed in one place and provided quality education and quality musical experiences <clears throat> that they could count on. Mm -hmm. You feel that's that not just having a job but making it a career yes, is important. Yes, that, that was one of the fervor I was talking about. I had, once they found out, uh, the public found out that I had talent, um, I had caught blonde invitation to go here, there, yonder, in the state, but I would not go, and, and it was my passion to stay here and develop these kids that I had uh, found a, a bond with, to the parents and the community, mm -hmm. and and they, they really worked, you know, it was a miracle, really. So you taught students, then you taught their children. Yes. And then you taught their children. Their, their children. So you're the great grand director then. Yeah. That's fantastic. What concepts did you have to instill in your students that led them to achieve quality music? That was a hard job because, you know, during this period, regardless of what we did, we the discrimination was that you didn't get the opportunity. I recall uh, uh, Ted Mack talent show came to town, and I brought one of my kids who was thoroughly prepared to to pass the audition, but they did it. They let her perform to save face, but no response from how she rated or whatnot. What and. And these are the kind of things that these kids were faced with everywhere. They, some places they wanted us to go, but they, they knew that it was very little chance of them getting beyond being good within here. And that was the thing I had to build a pride in them. I said, you know how to do it. You can play it well as they can play it, even better. And of course, this is the thing that catapulted us into early integration because uh, not only uh, they didn't need us to, for the integrate the class. They, they were good, good enough. We played all the standard music, all the season of, you know. Mm -hmm. So that was the greatest motivation. 
and it's the thing that gave them the confidence. To, these kids were so confident I had to quit quieting them down half the time. So you went from being that band at the black school right. to that good black band right. to being that good band. Yeah, and then uh, lately the, the best. And then the best. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. And that was because you led them to believe they could. You're right. Yeah, they, they really did. And and they, they proved it and the parents proved it because um, many of the kids did not have job, summer jobs. They would come here, we created a summer program. I had to provide recreation for them because they couldn't go to the other places. And we had a, a daily program during the summer. And the parents who supported the kids, they could come and stay. We, sometimes we would stay as late as 8 o'clock at night because and then I have to take the girls home and so forth. Mm -hmm. But that, their interest has it just ignited to the fact that this is the, something, contribution that we could make to, to give the community and else recognition and people will recognize it as being somebody who can accomplish something. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. Wow. That's a gift that lasts the oh, lifetime. Yeah. Yes. Absolutely. What did you do all those years? You were here for more than 50 years. How did you keep the edge, the, the passion? It, it's, it's what they gave me, the response. How, how could you see somebody giving you, you your all and you, you desert them? Or, or you, you become selfish enough that you don't try to uh, savage their passion in terms of wanting to do something, wanting to be something. See, and I had part of our program, We they had, kids had to play solos and ensembles in their churches. We prepared stuff that, that and I, they were rewarded for the trophies and different things, uh, incentives for them to do that. And every child played outside the school community into his uh, civic groups, like, uh, the community programs, sororities and fraternities and so forth mm -hmm. that they had for the experience and as well as a pre, uh, an opportunity to give back to the community the, the things that they have acquired and could do to, to enhance their programs. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You created an alumni band that ran for years and years and years. Why? Well, they uh, for the most part, they enjoyed their high school career, so and they hated to leave each other, <laughs> and uh, they wanted to be together, and and they continue this service to the community. In fact, one of the major services was for uh, them to come back and practice with the present kids and work with them. You know, this share their experience with them, and uh, it. it it, it, words are inadequate for me to try to explain the excitement, the, the dedication that this whole community ignited behind the band program. You would think that it was a religion, really. <laughs> At least I felt that. And I, as a result of that, what did I do? I, something, for years, I didn't go to a movie. There for years, I, I didn't go to other things and so forth, participate in uh, social things in the community. Because every time I had an opportunity, I'd ask if it was a holiday, can we practice here? Can we do this? 100% cooperation. And, and they were giving up so much. Hey, uh, what, what else could I do? Uh, they showed that I was halfway intelligent than to respond to you know, that. They didn't even create things. Their parents would create things. And uh, if 50 or 60 parents have different things, and every one of them want them to show off their child, want us mm -hmm. to play for their church, uh, and we it, it became a community thing. And for raising things, it, I don't know, it's just phenomenal. It's pretty hard for me to, to describe uh, the enthusiasm, the, 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 uh, it, it just was overwhelming to me. And I had an opportunity to also give them experiences they wouldn't not have had ordinarily because because of the need uh, for us participants in these communities we broke down areas where we could go into the front of restaurants 
they would serve us uh, food for our performance. They would give us donations and so forth because we became a very important industry in the uh, school and the community. Mm -hmm. and, and, uh, it'll take me 10 years to <laughs> explain <laughs> all the things that we did during the 40 years. But anyway, the parents enjoyed it because they had a chance to see their children perform and gain respect among their peers. And they, it, it was just an overwhelming thing. Uh, Sometimes I thought band got too much interest because some of the teachers and the preachers and everybody else felt that the kids were putting more time uh, to the band, they were coming to that school, but we were servicing group, other groups all the time, mm -hmm. and this is why they missed their home base doing things. It was this is this has really been a phenomenal experience with me. I just wish I had plenty of time to go year by year, <laughs> but time won't permit that. So, <clears throat> your your legacy to this area, Jones High School and the Orlando area seems to be the relationship that grew up between the band and the community. Um, that they supported each other and needed each other and then rewarded each other. Um, yeah, well, we, there were so many barriers that we had and because, uh, not only because they were black, but because they were good enough. We could play for, you just named the occasion, we had the music to, to fit the purpose. Mm -hmm. and, and it wasn't any problem even to sight read on performances. They, they were just that good, see. And uh, it's, it, 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 this became, at one time, the most uh, the promising project, in, in, I felt, in this community because we had to be everywhere to represent everybody on every occasion. Mm -hmm. And this was a new experience for them, especially breaking down barriers and going to the front door instead of the back door of everything. And getting and it, a chance to even hear a real symphony, boy, that was something. Mm -hmm. And yet we were trying to play symphonic music. And it wasn't just performing the music. Oh. It was representing. Oh, yeah. It, it, and, a lot of and being in the community where folks saw these kids doing good. Right. And you instilled that in them. I hope you are aware and proud of what you have given. Yeah, well, I, I have to be because, you know, the proof of pudding is eating. <laughs> and the thing that has happened, I showed you a picture of, of all these kids that took to the fair, uh, nine PhDs and, you know, lawyers, doctors, bishops, and community leaders, and mm -hmm. everything is, is there, and uh, medical profession, you name it. Uh, this is the, the thing that I'm real proud of because thinking about the time when I came here and what it changed their values. They wanted to be something. Because things were at a very low level when I came. Even if you were somebody, you were not recognized for it. But because we forged our way into the community and these cultures by doing well and and and, and, and taking all the flack that you you know that comes from when we go into these different communities. Don't think now that we missed any of that other stuff. We we got it all. And but. Uh, uh, I guess that they inherited that from me. They learned how to accept it because uh, of the better cause that it would create later mm -hmm. to break down a lot of these barriers mm -hmm. and so forth. Because I know it worked because a lot of people would bring uh, from the other side of town, they would bring con contributions and of all sorts to us. They said, just please don't tell anybody that we gave it to you because it would have <laughs> hurt my business or, or something like that. And anything I would ask them, they would really do it. Well, that's fantastic. I want to thank you for sharing your experiences with us and sharing some time with us. I know you would welcome visits from current directors and future directors so that they can continue these conversations with you. You have so much to give back to us. So it's time to say goodbye. Okay, bye-bye. And I hope they appreciate the minimal contribution that we made. Thank you.